Hey there, it's Chris from Good Roads, and I want to make my own skateboard trucks at home. And I'm not talking about 3D printed trucks, and I'm not talking about CNC machined aluminum trucks, which are really expensive and take some really expensive equipment to make. I'm talking about cast aluminum trucks, the same way they're made in the factories. And all that means one thing. I have to learn how to cast aluminum. So that's what we're going to do in this video. We're going to melt some dang old metal, pour it into the shape that we want, and we're going to do it using a technique called green sand casting. Let's get to it. And bang howdy, I have never learned a craft with cooler names for their stuff. The first thing we need for green sand casting is something called a flask. A flask is made of two boxes stacked on top of each other. The bottom half of the flask is called the drag, and the top half of the flask is called the cope. Like I said, really cool words. Interesting. And those two boxes are going to house the two halves of our mold. So in order to keep our mold halves aligned, we need to build some registration into our drag and cope. And there we go, a super simple casting flask. The next thing we're gonna need is a buck, or a model of our cast part that we can use to make the negative in our mold. And since I've never cast metal before, I thought it would be good to start with something simple and useful, a sand ramming tool that I can use later to make my sand molds. I got this idea and a ton of other excellent casting learning from Brian Ultridge? Ultraj? Hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. So I'll link his video on the topic up to the right. My buck is 3D printed in two parts with printed registration pins. And straight from the printer, the surface is rough with the plastic layer line. So I wanted to sand it down and give my casting a more smooth surface. Once the part was sanded down to 220 grit, I sprayed both halves with a coat of filler primer. And when it was dry, I hit it with one last quick sanding and my bucks had a nice smooth surface. The next thing I need is some metal. I've read and watched a ton of material in my research on casting, and the one thing that I've heard over and over again is it's best to work with aluminum that is meant to be cast. So car rims, engine blocks, motor housings, things like that, as opposed to extruded aluminum like you'd see in soda cans or the kind of aluminum that we use in craft projects most of the time. I don't have any of that, but I have a slew of old routers that either don't work or are terrifyingly dangerous to use. I've got plenty of great working modern routers, so I think the cast aluminum housing of these old tools will be a great material to make my trucks from. After a couple hours of disassembling in my tiny basement scrapyard, I had a nice pile of castable aluminum and a pretty big pile of other cool stuff. Neat! Next, I need to get those big chunks of aluminum down to a size that will fit in my furnace, and it seems like the traditional way to do it is with a sledgehammer. So... I gotta say, busting up metal is great work if you happen to be in a bad mood. Productive and cathartic all at the same time. Once my metal was processed, it was time to get melting. Now, you can DIY every tool you need for this process. There are some awesome videos out there on how to make cheap foundries and casting sand, and I thought long and hard about going that route. But I decided that, first and foremost, I'm someone who wants to make skate parts, so I made the call to buy my foundry in green sand so I could get straight to casting. I'm using a pretty generic 3 kilogram electric foundry I got off Amazon. I'll link to the one I bought below, and while that's heating up, I'll make my molds. This is what I'll be casting a better version of, a tool to ram my mold sand into place. 
And to get started with my mold, I placed half of my buck in the bottom of half of my flask and covered it in casting sand, sifting the first layer through a sieve to get a nice even coating, then packing the rest in place. The sand I'm using is a pre-made water bonded casting sand, I'll link to the one I used below, but you can also make your own out of sand, bentonite clay, and water. There are plenty of good videos on how to do that right here on YouTube. Once the sand was packed in place, it was time to strike the mold, which is an awesome fancy way of saying scraping off the extra from the top. Still, just awesome words. Then I flipped the bottom of the mold, seated the top of the flask, and added some baby powder to help keep the parting line separate. Once the second half of the buck was in place, I repeated the process for the top half of the mold. Then I split the mold. I tap the bucks loose and remove them from the mold, and here you can see how all of this comes together to make the negative space of our part in our mold. We're basically making a dense, heat-proof, two-sided sandcastle that we can pour molten metal into. And folks, that's green sand casting in a nutshell. Now I need a way to get all that molten metal down into the mold, which means we get to use a bunch of other awesome metal casting words like sprue, which is the tube leading down into the mold that the metal gets poured into. Or runner, which is the tunnel that takes the metal from the sprue to the gate, which is the point where the metal enters the mold cavity. And since we don't want to trap air in the mold, we also need to make a riser, a channel and hole that allow metal and air to escape from the other side of the mold. And for all you talented foundry workers out there, this is literally my first cast ever, so if I messed any of that up, I'm sorry, be patient with me, just set me right down in the comments below. The last thing to do is to make a little pour funnel, which will make it easier to get the metal where we want. And with that, the mold is done. It's finally time to melt some metal. I set the temperature on my furnace and filled my crucible. The next step is to remove all the impurities and crud that's in my metal. I'm just using a bent piece of mild steel to do the job, and I rested it on top of the furnace for a while to preheat it and to drive out any moisture so I can avoid a steam explosion. All those impurities are called dross, and that's the paint, the sawdust, and any other contaminants that were in the old busted up metal. The dross needs to be skimmed off the top of the molten metal to get a nice pure pool of aluminum and to give us a nice clean pour. And with that done, it's time to pour some metal. I grabbed my crucible and poured my aluminum into the mold, and as far as I can tell, we're looking good. The sprue's filled, and I have metal coming up out of the riser on the other side of the mold, so hopefully the whole cavity is nice and full of aluminum. But the only way to know for sure is to crack the mold open, so I let it cool for about an hour and then did just that. Oh my god, it's so cool! Alright, it's a little pitted. Ooh, it's still very hot. So, far from perfect, but honestly, for my first casting ever, I'm stoked. Aside from some porosity in the surface, I also have a couple areas where it looks like the metal got too cold to properly flow through the mold. And I think that's because I was working a little bit too close to the actual melting temperature of aluminum. Next time I will heat it a little bit more. But I did manage to fill out most of the mold with metal and I think that I can clean this casting up, warts and all, and have a usable tool. I busted my part out of the sand and honestly, yeah, I'm pretty dang happy with how that came out. Let's cut off the spare metal and clean it up.
And all sanded and polished, that's a pretty nice sand rammer. Now, initially, the plan was to call it there. I, I just learned a new craft. This is a whole project, start to finish. But I wrapped this up. This was sitting on my kitchen table, staring at me while I ate dinner. I took a shower. I was kind of sitting around, twiddling my thumbs. So, I went back out into the shop and took a stab at casting a base plate. Because on this channel, we make board sport stuff. I went through the same process to make my molds. And it was actually pretty cool to pour the metal in the lower light of the night because you can really see how hot everything gets. And honestly, not too bad. Now, this is not a part that I want to drill out and use on an actual board. It's got too many flaws, it's got too many little inconsistencies and incorrectnesses about it, and that is why this was a really useful cast to do, because I can learn so much from this about how to redesign my part, how to cast better next time, and how to get closer to the exact part that I want. And this guy! Uh, maybe, maybe a little bit ugly, but I am so happy with how it works. Honestly, the extra weight, the tapered end, the flat end, and the nice curved handle really do make it much easier, much nicer to pack the sand into a mold. And now that this is done, I can go back to using my temporary wooden sandbagging tool for its original purpose. Hunting vampires. <laughs> so yeah, zero to 60 on casting aluminum, seriously. Not bad for only a couple days experience. I'm gonna want to make some updates to my truck design, incorporating what I learned from this project so that my cast can come out a little bit better, but then we're gonna try to cast the whole shebang. Base plates, hangers, hangers that include a cast in place axle. We're doing the whole thing. So wish me luck, cause that's coming next. There's a good chance that while you are watching this video, if you watch it as it come out, I am in the shop working on those parts, trying to get those parts cast. So if you wanna see how it comes out, go ahead and subscribe. If you like seeing projects like this and you want to see me tackle more of them, you can go ahead and join this awesome crew who support me over on Patreon. There'll be a link down in the description below. If you got any questions or comments, leave them down below. If you have any tips on how to deal with porosity in the surface of like a DIY scale, small shop scale, cast aluminum foundry, leave that in the comments down below too. I could really use the help. It would be awesome. Cause, uh, cause I don't know what I'm doing. That's gonna be it for this week. I am so, so excited about how this project is going. I can't wait to see how it turns out. I can't wait to ride my own homemade trucks. I love having you guys along for the ride so much. So until next time, I'll see you soon. It just, it just needs a song. It just, I'm not even apologizing. It's just an activity that needs a song.